Hi, I'm Jay Lee from Naver Z, and you're listening to the Tomorrow with Rovio podcast. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to uh, another episode of the Tomorrow with Rovio podcast. I'm your host, Ben Mattis. And if you've listened to even a few episodes of this podcast, you've probably <laughs> identified a few key themes that I'm very interested in. Uh, obviously, persistent virtual worlds, <laughs> once upon a time, MUDs, and then MMOs, and now we sort of describe a lot of these things almost as kind of proto-metaverses um, are very interesting to me, uh, both as a player and as a as a developer. Also, player-to-player -player economies, sort of rich digital ownership um, where transactions can take place between players, not just uh, between the players and the, own, the developer, are very interesting to me. And of course, user-generated content, the ability for uh, the players to be the creators and make things and share things and sell things has has been interesting to me. And I've talked to a bunch of people who, you know, are interested in this space, often with a sort of Web3 crypto kind of angle. And um, when you, in the West, in 2021, like if you took a snapshot of those three things, like proto-metaverses, digital ownership, user-generated content, uh, a couple of names would probably really pop, like, you know, Decentraland would probably really stand out. Uh, the Sandbox would really stand out. If, if you went a little further back, obviously, you know, games like Second Life, which still have, you know, an incredible engagement and an incredible following would definitely stand out. But one thing that's really interesting is that <clears throat> for a couple of years now, uh, sort of depending on your point of view, quietly bubbling away, uh, with a very, very strong focus on Gen Z, um, has been a game developed in Korea called Zepetto. Now, uh, Zepetto is quite big in the East and is increasingly growing its presence in North America, obviously with a America focus, it's growing fastest in the States. And last year I saw an announcement uh, that the company behind Zepetto was opening a studio in, in the US in order to help sort of grow that presence. Um, and so I reached out to uh, the CEO of that American uh, office, that American subsidiary, Jay, and I asked him if he'd be on the podcast. And I'm delighted to say he said yes. So uh, the interview today is a deep dive into Zepetto as a lens on these three particular areas. So whatever you want to call it, quote unquote, big M, proto metaverse, digital ownership, user generated content, uh, the sort of creator economy, as it were, with a particular uh, focus on Gen Z and uh, Gen Z's interests, you know, in games and culture, I guess, sort of in society, and how Zepetto as a platform is kind of tackling all of those things. Hope you enjoy the conversation. Uh, hope you learn something about those areas, learn something about Zepetto. And obviously, if you haven't checked out the platform already, I highly recommend that you do. They're doing some really interesting and innovative stuff. Thanks. Enjoy. Jay? Welcome to the podcast. Thank you for agreeing to do this. I really appreciate it. We've never met before. I took a chance a couple of months ago and I cold messaged you on LinkedIn when I saw the announcement about uh, the opening of Naver USA. Obviously, I'd been following Naver and Zepetto for a while. So when I saw that there was um, someone in the US getting involved in this project, it was very interesting to me. And I reached out and we've had a couple of chats ever since. Um, so thank you for, you know, sharing your time with, with me and with the listeners of this podcast. We will be talking about Zepetto a lot. We will be talking about Naver a lot. So I was wondering um, if you could open talking a little bit about what that is. Like, who do you work for? What is Zepetto? <laughs> Why is that interesting? Uh, and then I'll have some follow-up questions about how your career brought you into that. In, in, you know, how, why did it intersect with what's going on with this cool project? Sure. Uh, thank you for having me. My name is Jung Sok Jay Lee. Uh, you can call me just Jay. Thanks. Uh, yeah, the <laughs> Zepetto. It. I mean, I can talk about this later. It's it's a it's a UGC platform. Some people think that it's an avatar based social media. Some people think that it's a 
content creation tool, uh, you know, whatever you you call it. Uh, it's where uh, you know it's a creative community where people come together and you know explore different options. Uh, you know, just playing around, um, and it was born in 2018, and uh, it evolved into uh, it kind of reshaped its form into uh, different products. Okay. And now it's becoming uh, truly a UGC platform, and I, I can talk about it more uh, later. Okay, very cool. And so it was born in 2018, but your studio, your branch, Navra USA, is is younger than that, right? Oh yeah, is is uh, the the entity wise, we first started uh, running the payroll October last year, but previously okay. it was Snow, so I can talk about the, okay. the spin off process later too. Okay, yeah, okay, great, and and maybe you could talk a little bit before we get into all the corporate stuff, which per- I don't know why I find it so interesting when it comes to this particular product because it's not your usual game studio that made this thing. Um, but before we get into that, can we talk just a little bit about you, your background? Uh, who are you? What did you do before you joined Snow or Naver? And, and kind of what, yeah, like how did you, um, what about your expertise and experience made you an obvious fit for, you know, this product and, and this company? Sure. Uh, you know what? I used to be a full-time music producer and singer okay. uh, back in South Korea. Uh, it was a good seven year long pursuit. Uh, so I know a little bit of what it's like to be an independent artist, uh, hoping to find people who would appreciate my work and show some support. Yeah, it was, it was in my mid twenties, uh, when I first got into tech, uh, it's back in early 2009. I'm, I don't know, Van, if you recall, uh, there was time, there was no iPhone in Korea and uh, there was an iPod Touch and people were crazy right. about this iBeer kind of thing, right? That's <laughs> I remember when that. I first, yeah. 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 Or the, that's or the one joined. that made the gun sound. All it did exactly. was play the sound yeah, of a yeah. gun for 99 cents, yeah. And they made tons of money. So yeah, I was really uh, fortunate to join this company called Dev Sisters uh, as a founding member. Uh, thinking back, it was kind of crazy. Uh, I was like, you know, what do I do here? I'm a music guy, and you're, you're mm-hmm. all the you know you're the you're the techies, <laughs> and they were like you know we're all new to this mobile thing, so you know you're good as long as you learn fast. Uh, it was a group of people from uh, internet companies, design agencies, game studios, publishers, uh, computer science major, college students. Uh, we mm. all gathered together, believing that the iPhone will kind of open up the new era. And the Very company cool. started as a yeah mobile app developer, and okay. uh, we did. Uh, we worked on various projects from a simple app, like, you know, like a iFan <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. to a mobile and even uh, web-based social games. Uh, and, you know, what's good about working for a startup, uh, you get to wear multiple hats. So oh, I yeah. first joined as a composer, uh, sound designer, but uh, got a chance to take on uh, a product manager and UX designer roles too. Okay. And they're now known as a... a developer publisher of Cookie Run, uh, which used oh, to sure. be Oven Break uh, in my time there. Uh, Cookie Run has become like Angry big. Birds of Rovio, yeah, right? It's big. I <laughs> and, heard of yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. You can see the gingerbread IP absolutely. everywhere, especially in Korea. And yeah, I'm pretty sure my nephew in Korea uh, got one of the pencil cases or a backpack. That's got a, that then, feels pretty good, right? Yeah, That's, yeah. That feels pretty good when you see like people in your network Kids, friends, you know, whatever. They know acquiring what I'm merchandise on, yeah. based off of an IP that you touch. That's a good feeling. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, and then I went to grad school, uh, studied uh, recommendation systems, and did some social network analysis projects. Hmm. I ended up uh, developing a social music discovery app sponsored by Samsung uh, as a graduation project. It was it was pretty fun. Wow. And okay. after that, yeah, after that, I joined uh, another startup building. Uh, computer vision libraries and camera applications. And about a year later, uh, it got acquired by Intel, and I ended up relocating to San Francisco Bay Area in 2014. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And after two years at Intel uh, headquarters, Perceptual Computing Group, uh, I left the company and decided to start my own startup because uh, I already saw, you know, one company going public and another one getting acquired. So I was like, oh, maybe I can pull it off too. <laughs> so I, I convinced my ex coworkers and my best friend, uh, and we founded Buzz Music. Uh, it's okay. Q at the end uh, instead of C. Mm-hmm. And back then, uh, 
I was like, uh, well, I didn't make it in the music industry, and I'd been in tech for seven years. So a second, you wanted to try again, marry your two yeah. loves. <laughs> yeah, I felt like, you know, I was, I was almost called to start this journey. Uh, okay. We wanted to uh, build a music-centric social media. It was back in 2016 when there was no TikTok in the States. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we're kind of imagining, you know, TikTok today. Uh, well, if I talk about my startup journey, it's going to be long enough for yep. another episode. So I'll, I'll okay. save it. That'll, that'll be, that'll be f second round. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like long story short, uh, about a year later, ByteDance acquired Musical.ly and started pouring out money. And, you know, we kind of realized that uh, we couldn't really compete against TikTok. Yep. Yeah. So uh, after uh, making a few pivots, uh, when we still had uh, millions of MAUs, uh, we decided to call it a journey, and we got acquired by Snow Corp uh, two years ago. Got it. Okay. Uh, right, right before the pandemic. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Since then, I've been working on Zepedo. Man, what a what a journey from musician to social gamer to AI, computer vision, somehow back to music and social networks. I mean, clearly technology and creativity have been at the core of everything that you've done. And, and uh, you know, so I can see some threads, but, but also a lot of really interesting branches. Um, but I could also sort of understand why a platform like Zepetto might be a good home for all of the things that you find interesting. Mm -hmm. um, um, so uh, can you... Talk now maybe is a good time to talk a little bit about the, the structure, sort of Snow versus Naver and Naver Z and like that kind of thing. Because Sure, sure. Uh, and, and what are they known for? What, what is their specialty? Because, it, yeah, it, it's a relatively large entity. <laughs> right. Sure. Uh, yeah, Naver is like South Korea's Google. Yeah. Uh, aside from you know, like cloud, AI, robotics, and all that, uh, it has the number one search engine in the, in the country that Google still cannot beat. Wow. Um, and there's, there's Line, uh, a messaging platform, which is number one in Japan and uh, in many other South uh, e uh, Asian countries. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's Webtoon and Wattpad, uh, where you can enjoy tons of user-created fictions and, co uh, and comics. Yeah, this Naver is a, is a parent company of Snow Corp. Um, and now Snow, where uh, Zepetto spun off from, is where all the kind of next generation products are being built. Okay. Uh, like we have various uh, camera editing apps, uh, beauty education, MCN, StockX like uh, resale platform, the list can go on. Interesting. Okay. And Snow has multiple teams and multiple studios around the world. Then it's it's uh, mostly in Korea, some in uh, in other Asian uh, countries. But okay, yeah, it was our first time to have a presence in the U.S. Okay, all right, okay, perfect. So some years ago, Snow, this sort of you know whatever innovation factory. Uh, stumbles upon this idea of Zepetto, which is in some ways a marriage of all sorts of things that it's been playing with starts finding some success, it grows, it grows, it grows, and then they decide, now we're going to open a U.S. subsidiary to focus mm -hmm. on, on growing this even more. And that's where you came in. And that's what, you've yeah. been, that's what you're focusing on. Okay, perfect, perfect. Um, so Zepetto, I guess, um, big in Japan, big in Korea, like, like obviously originated in um, sort of Asia, uh, mm -hmm. What are you seeing in terms of international numbers? What, what happened that made you guys think now's the right time to open a, a U.S. branch? Oh, I mean, yeah, it's, it's not just a studio. It's a you know, studio for content creation. Of course, exactly, the, yeah. the U.S. office has you know, teams working on content programming, uh, operation and production, uh, but there's a whole lot more function, uh, such as trust and safety, content R&D, uh, community development, uh, creative partnership, and developer relations. Wow. Okay. So, uh, I mean, since we've been focusing more on growth, not mm -hmm. publicity, mm -hmm. so I can see many people uh, in the industry may have not even heard of us yet. Yep. Uh, if they heard of it, you know, most of them think that uh, we're only big in APAC because mm -hmm. it was born in Korea, right? Mm -hmm. But what's, what's funny, though, is when uh, looking at the country breakdown of 2021, uh, annual active users, the U.S. was the fourth largest country. Wow. We had, uh, we had more users in the States than in Korea or Japan. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. So, 
yeah, we're all about kind of being customer centric. Uh, so where our users are, we get closer to them. And, uh, you know, there's other obvious reasons too. You know, we have Very cool. LA, the Bay Area, um, New York, there's um, Vancouver, Toronto, you know, the, there's tons of talent from animation or game studios, uh, social media and other tech companies uh, who can bring their expertise and experiences to uh, serve our users even better. And okay. for the past year, yeah, we've been, we've been onboarding people from uh, TikTok, Google, Apple, Riot Games, uh, DreamWorks, you know, Respawn Entertainment, uh, to name a few. Okay. And um, so let's now dive deep into what Zepetto is, because I think there's got to be some listeners here who are scratching their heads and saying, mm -hmm. what on earth is Zepetto that people from Riot and people from creators from TikTok are both interested in being on this platform at the same time? Like it, it's in some ways, it kind of defies sort of like expectations a little bit. So um, let's talk about Zepetto. It's it's not just social media. It's not it's not a social media platform. It's not a social game. It's it's sort of something new. Um, mm -hmm. uh, how do you guys try and describe it when you know whatever reaching out to some new creator or some new studio or some new agency? and saying you should bring your creativity to our world, to our platform. Yeah, I mean, like, first of all, you're not alone asking this question. Uh, I get this question a lot, and even myself, when I first joined the company uh, uh, in 2020, I, just, I asked the same question. Right. Like, is it, is it a social media? Is it a, is it a gaming platform, content creation tool? What, what is it? Uh, and because, you know, I wanted to define what it is and come up mm -hmm. with the strategy, like relevant mm -hmm. strategy, right? Uh, so on the surface, you can uh, do pretty much anything other social media offers. There's, there's profile, there, uh, follow, content feed, and all that. Uh, you just do it with your avatar. So right. you can, I mean, simply put, it looks like a, you know, a t TikTok or Instagram mm -hmm. you know, doing with avatar. But yep. that's not it, though. There are 3D maps, and some of you know, them have gameplay mechanics. Mm -hmm. uh, and some people even use Zepetto uh, as a content creation tool to mm -hmm. tell their stories. Mm -hmm. Like from a, from a meme to a you know, serialized comic uh, to an like, animated version of you know, music video, uh, you know, their favorite music video, or even a film. Yep. So there's just... A little bit of everything. Uh, and then suddenly, when even ourselves were kind of struggling to define what it is, the the metaverse keyword popped up, yes, right? Yes, yes. That, that can't just, have hurt. <laughs> yeah. And people started calling us a metaverse. Uh, yep. And, you know, honestly, I, I don't think our users care about the label or definition uh, as much as media or, you know, industry professionals. Yeah, it's just it's just Zepetto to them. Cool. Uh, so we'll just go with whatever you know people call us. Well, okay. So I think that's exactly the right answer. Um, who cares what it is as long as people enjoy it? Um, let me then phrase it slightly differently. Okay. Um, uh, TikTok, social networks, modern social networks, even old school social networks. You know, Facebook mm -hmm. or something like that. I'm sure there are things about the way people behave on social networks and the way social networks are structured that have been very interesting for Zepetto. Mm -hmm. Social games, same thing. A social game, you know, like, I don't know, Farmville, right, mm -hmm. does not behave the same way as TikTok. A player right. on Farmville or on a typical quote-unquote social game does mm -hmm. not have the same sort of expectations as they have on their favorite quote-unquote social networks. Mm -hmm. So can you pick just a couple of things from uh, sort of modern social networks that you mm -hmm. think Zepetto does really well, and then maybe one or two things from maybe a modern social game or modern social gaming experience that you think Zepetto does really well. And and so what I'm kind of trying to fish for is like um, where did where did you guys most pay attention to social networking apps versus social games? Gotcha. Yeah, let's yeah let's talk about social media first. Um, Great, let's do it. Yeah, social media. Uh, generates its revenue mostly yes. through ad sales, right? Yes, yeah. That, that means uh, even if you have a solid fan base, like sizable fan base, in order to make money, uh, you have to promote other brands in yes. your content somehow. Yes. 
So yeah, it could be subtle and uh, yeah, it could be relevant, yeah. engaging and useful. I mean, yeah. it's true. I mean, they do the tricks. Uh, but w- what I'm getting at is essentially uh, you don't make money off of yourself as a brand. Mm-hmm. You, You're you promoting need some, someone else's product. Yeah, you need some sort of a sponsors unless yep. uh, you have the capital to launch your own, you know, fashion beauty brands like you know Kim Kardashian or Kylie sure. Jenner. Yeah. So I, I think a lot of kind of you know content creators enjoy interactions with their fans on social media, but be- because of this business model uh, limitation, there's there's always this tension between would my fans like this sponsored content and mm-hmm. but you know if I don't get paid by brands how do I pay my bills right right that does there's there's other platforms like you know Patreon uh, you know kind of popping up uh, Zepetto on the other hand uh, it, it looks like social media on the surface but the, the business model wise uh, it's built on a freemium free to play uh, business model so it's, it's kind of like a game right that mm-hmm. means creators can grow their fan base and promote themselves mm-hmm. do the live streaming uh, promote their own 3d clothing design not others and and the and the game they developed and their fans open their wallets mm-hmm. and you know another huge plus is uh you know you don't even have to reveal your face right you can if you want to and you know there's a creator who you know who show up their face too uh, but most of our users don't that that means your your avatar doesn't even have to look like yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of users have multiple characters with mm-hmm. uh, different personas and kind of kind of backstories behind them. You can be you or anyone you can imagine uh, and create things, spaces, experiences, and you know, just to tell your stories. Yeah. Um, and yeah, now like switching to the social gaming. Sure. I think I think the gaming, uh, you know, term gaming has this connotations like uh, competition, achievement, uh, challenge, and even even mastery. Sure, dominance sometimes. Yeah, right. Depending yeah. On, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So uh, certainly, if you say if, like the gamer, right? That, that stereotypical right, exactly. gamer. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So even if it's social, uh, typically the only difference is whether you actually know or know of. Uh, this other players okay. who are either on your team or a competitor. Okay, I think that's the only kind of you know difference. Uh, let let me put it this way: you can you can team up like squad up with others, including your real world friends, in order to win. Mm-hmm. Or you can play a a game with other people to have fun and you know get to know each other better. Mm-hmm. W- what I'm getting at is you can do a similar activity that is inherently social for a completely different purpose. Yes. So I think, uh, you know, most of Zepetto users would probably identify with socializer than yep. gamer in this regard. Yep. yep. Yeah, so we don't, we don't call our uh, interactive maps uh, games. We call, we call them worlds. Worlds, okay. Yeah, and, and I'm yet- not sure if... Oh, go ahead. Well, so it's just, it's interesting, uh, you know, I've, I've played a bunch of Zepetto, I've, I've hung out in a bunch of those worlds, and absolutely there are some, uh, you know, worlds or experiences that don't have that kind of competitive element to it, right, where, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I would say the socializing, the socializing is, is, socializing is probably more important than the mechanic itself, right, than the mm-hmm. actual activity that you're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, but, the, you know, there, there are some where... Well, you, you feel a little bit of it, you know, you kind of want to win. You, you want to be first. You, 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 you know, you are against other people. Um, uh-huh. But so it's interesting to me that you're saying that you think your average player is probably prioritizing more the socializing side of things than the winning side of things. Um, that, that's really neat. I, I, you know, that's great. I think the world yeah, needs more create and socialize and share uh-huh. and not just win and dominate and destroy. Yeah, and I think it could it could apply to kind of Roblox as well, not just us. I mean, the degree may be uh, may vary, uh, but I mean, I'm not sure if that's why Roblox started calling their maps experiences instead of games. Maybe you know there's something in common here. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
So yeah, think, like we, yeah. There's but, also yeah. the timing whereby the uh, Apple Epic lawsuit and the whole question about That's games. True too, yeah. it, it, it has to have played some sort of role in Roblox's decision to change their naming from gaming to experiences. It can't have been a complete coincidence, but I right. agree that there are lots of Roblox things that are not your typical game where mm-hmm. you're not all about winning and dominating, uh, uh, etc. But I also think that. Um, particularly um, in sort of recent years, you know, game designers and ludologists probably have their very structured definition of what a game is. And it, you know, it mm-hmm. usually involves rules and structured rules and win conditions uh-huh. and, you know, that sort of thing. Um, but I think what the average consumer thinks of when they think of a game is probably getting relatively broad. If it's mm-hmm. interactive and I have fun, Mm-hmm. For most people, it's probably a game. Yeah. Uh, I, I think the definition is broadening quite a lot in, in the last few years. Mm-hmm. And I think that, you know, the let's say the kind of difference, how we view, you know, what are the success metrics uh, at the, for example, at the game studio versus the pedo? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, we, we look at the time spent metric, just like other social game, you know, uh, publishers or studios, but uh, translating that time spent uh, into money spent, mm-hmm. that is not our, our success metric. We, right. we look at what percentage of our users encounter and discover other users and mm-hmm. start following one another in the world and how, how much conversation is happening between them. Interesting. Yeah. So really optimizing for social KPIs as opposed to mm-hmm. typical retention or monetization uh, yep. KPIs. So Zepetto is a creator platform. Players can create things. They can create um, costumes and uh, 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 clothing items. They can create worlds. How much do you guys focus on uh, the creator percentage? Like, you know, growing the percentage of your player base who feel motivated to create something as opposed to, you know, whatever, being a more passive consumer of the content of other players. How important it is, is it to you to get those numbers up? Oh, yeah. I mean... In terms of UGC creation, uh, I, how I view it is UGC is not, you know, not a nice addition, but it's, it's the key to our it's platform. Yeah, okay. Yeah, our, our mission is giving power uh, to the creators by democratizing creativity. Uh, what does it mean? Like, what does it look like? Uh, yeah, let me, let me put it this way. Uh, we're, we're not a AAA studio, obviously. Mm-hmm. Naver Z and Zepetto are not Epic and Fortnite. Uh, mm-hmm. We're not Riot and League of Legends. We're not Rovio and Angry Birds. Uh, we're not Golden Ramsey and Hell's Kitchen. Yeah. So Zepetto is like an open air food market. You, you see what I mean? Uh, our, our success like, does not rely on our own IP or a big name producer or, or the best art creative director in the world. Our success relies on uh, user creation, like mm-hmm. diverse and unique mm-hmm. selections, mm-hmm. come with a you know lively and friendly vibe. Mm-hmm. So people don't <clears throat> don't come to play Zepetto. People come to play with with their stars and friends yep. in Zepetto. Yep. Is there a particular like so? Um, is there a particular type of creator that? Uh, sort of slides into Zepetto the most seamlessly? Like, is it fashion designers? Is it uh, lifestyle vloggers? Uh, is there, are there some people who, you know, get Zepetto more immediately because it sort of speaks more directly to how they're used to working, you know, whatever, uh, and how they're used to creating already pre-Zepetto? Yeah, I think if they their personality... Uh is kind of like a, this funny, you know, commentator about different sort of games or even like conspiracy theory. Mm-hmm. Uh, something like this, Gen Zers uh, are passionate about or ex- interested in. Uh, yeah, these people tend to uh, tend to do well uh, in Zepetto when they first try it out. And I mean, what they're kind of you know that their experience, how they describe is, hey, you know, on TikTok. What I could do with my fans is pretty much limited. I mean, they can mm-hmm. they can comment on my post, and you know, there's likes. But if we want to kind of walk around and kind of take the take the selfies together and have a little audio chat, uh, like a real time, and do a little you know mini games, 
uh, they cannot do that. Uh, right. you, know, you, can, you can do the streaming, but it's more like a broadcasting, yeah, you know, yeah. telling your stories yeah, rather absolutely. than super interactive, right? So yeah. Zepedo offers a spot for them to, you know, go beyond creating the, the physical tangible merge. Yeah. Uh, and just you know, simply put your face or log- logo, you know, on your hoodie or something. But they can actually, you know, partner with other talented creators to explore their own version of you know, three D items or mm-hmm. their you know, the the space they envision. Okay, and um, so uh, so it's interesting. Uh, we're going a little bit off script here, but this is just such an interesting subject. I want to dive into it a little bit more. Um, you talked about streamers, right? So. One of the nice things about a, a, a platform like TikTok is it's one to many, it's one to infinite, right? I say a thing and infinity people can hear that thing. Um, Zepetto, obviously, as a 3D world that's running client side on a device, has technical constraints. I usually feel like when I'm in a Zepetto world, it's maybe 25, something like that, mm-hmm. give or take. Like that's kind of how many other people I'm in, I'm interacting with. So, how do um, creators think about who they're interacting with in the now, in real time, versus possibly the thousands or maybe even tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people they might have on a, a, a streaming platform like a, 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 like a TikTok or a Twitch or, or what have you. Where does the pedo fit into that, given that they're not necessarily interacting with their entire fan base, right? Sure. Yeah. I mean, if it's um, you know, kind of broadcasting one to you know, hundred thousand, uh, you know, millions. The YouTube and Twitch should be the right platform. Zepedo doesn't offer that, you know, capacity, mm-hmm. uh, and we don't we don't mind our creators uh, are not our exclusive creators. Uh, we we're more kind of we expect uh, Zepedo to be one of their choices. So you can imagine, uh, you know, finding an influencer on TikTok or Instagram and click on their link tree, yep. and we want it to be listed as one of the one of the Got social it. media they use, right? Got it. Yeah, and I can imagine uh, Zepedo. Can you know it's more natural for Zepedo to be there than Roblox because Roblox is more game centric. Yep. Zepedo is very kind of personality centric. Perfect. So if if it's a massive broad, broadcasting, uh, they choose somewhere else. If it's more kind of intimate, you know, you run your own kind of fashion show with you know like twenty people, uh, kind of invite them, you know, host a little party, uh, do a little mini games together, just like you know playing maybe Squid Game <laughs> virtually yep. together. Then Zepedo's a, Zepedo's the place. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, so I think I know the answer to this because you guys talked about how you don't have a marketing division, which means I assume you don't have a typical user acquisition funnel. You, you probably don't do a lot of paid user acquisition. Is that is that the case? We do a little bit of paid uh, paid ads uh, just to kind of you know just to keep the keep the keep some good amount of volume, but that's not our core purpose. It's okay. Uh, yeah, it's more like uh, building the social media presence because that means a lot for platforms like, you know, Zepedo, Roblox. Right. Yeah, I, I believe in the power uh, of UGC much more than a, you know, a dollar CPI and, you know, $5 LTV game. I, I hear you. I totally hear yeah. you. I mean, and um, I, you know, go ahead. Well, so uh, I guess just one operational challenge maybe that you face or, or maybe you don't. The nice thing about UA is how trackable it is, right? You can track Mm -hmm. the cohorts and you can track the performance and you can track their lifetime value and you can track your payback and it's like Mm -hmm. deeply, deeply trackable. Mm -hmm. And so that means it can be, you know, like optimized over time, right? Mm -hmm. Um, uh, How much visibility do you guys have about where your new users come from if it's all or if a lot of it comes from sort of word of mouth or... Uh, other social platforms that you maybe don't necessarily have like 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 trackable data from, like for example TikTok or Twitter or Instagram or you know whatnot. How much of a problem is it that um, you can't track with the same granularity uh, as with user acquisition? You know which creators are bringing in which number of new users. Yeah, I mean, we that, the the reason we run uh, performance marketing to a certain degree because we want a little bit of you know predictability. Uh, right. You know, we want to want, want to be able, able to track the results, but we're not too kind of concerned about you know less visibility. Uh, there's a there's an indicator that maybe this was the source. Uh, maybe that was was the source. I mean, one example could be 
I don't know, you know, about you, Matt. If you're a K-pop fan, especially if you if you ever, you know, if you are a Blackpink fan, uh, you will probably know Zepet already because there's mm-hmm. a, a Blackpink and Selena Gomez, uh, you know, Zepet version music video on YouTube, and it got like hundred something million views. <laughs> and we don't know like what percentage of users actually, you know, come to Zepet uh, by viewing that video. Uh, they may search on, you know, App Store, right? Just Zepet or they, you know, find some. Um, links, you know, somebody left on the comment. We don't yep. actually know unless we gave them all, you yep. know, F flyer, you know, yeah, attribution yeah, yeah. links. Yeah. So, I mean, this kind of strategic partnership, uh, it it helps. Uh, we have strategic partners with a partnership with top three uh, K-pop agencies: the agency of uh, BTS, Blackpink, yeah, heard and of Twice. Them. <laughs> yeah. All of them are in- investors, actually. So, yeah, this this kind of collaboration. Uh, the, the K-pop artist fans, uh, you know, they either turn into Zepeto users and vice versa. And a lot of them are yeah, happening in or, you know, happening organically. So we don't have much feasibility. We, we, we don't find it as a too much a problem. But there's some, you know, indicator, for example, how much uh, brand awareness and how much uh, user generated content, uh, you know, get how much impressions at least. Not, right. You know, not directly driving, uh, you know, installs. Yep. So, you know, Let's talk about TikTok. Uh, the hashtag Zepetto uh, on TikTok has 14 billion views. Yeah. So, yeah, to put it into perspective, it's more than uh, Animal Crossing, IMVU, and Sims combined. Mm-hmm. So, you know, this, this games have been around for, you know, 10 plus years, and Zepetto is like a newborn baby uh, compared to them. Uh, so you know, this social media post created with Zepetto is is the really uh, like a main driving force of, of our uh, new user acquisition, and we yep. we've been eyeing on how many more views on certain hashtags get. No, okay, that's really interesting. And then I guess just taking that, just wait. I want to make sure I can connect the dots here. So let's say I'm a creator uh, and I have my TikTok account, and I I don't know talk about uh, whatever movie reviews or something like that, mm-hmm. and I have a couple thousand followers. And I go into Zepetto and I create a world and I create some items um, and I'm going to promote my Zepetto thing on TikTok, right? Mm-hmm. Um, maybe you guys, Zepetto, don't necessarily know exactly how many people downloaded Zepetto from my TikTok posts, but mm-hmm. you do know how many people hung out in my world and how many people bought my items. That is trackable. So you can know that I, as a creator, have performed this well um, and then, you know, whether it's th- onboarded through Twitter or TikTok or, you know, what have you is maybe a little bit less important. What's important is how much, how lively the ecosystem is inside of the platform. And if I'm mm-hmm. creating great content and my fans are enjoying it, then I'm, I'm doing it right. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, it, it, well, I totally get it. So we've talked a lot about UGC. Can you can you talk about some of your personal favorites? Like, what are some standout creations on the platform that really got your attention? Worlds, games, or uh, clothing? Man, I mean, uh, we have tons of uh, talented item creators. Uh, I mean, all of them are kind of fascinating. But I mean, the, recently, uh, not sure if you got a you know chance to check out my uh, latest LinkedIn post. I, I'm, I wish I could <laughs> share my screen. <laughs> uh, yeah, but for the listeners, you can check out, check out the trailer at instagram.com slash zetflix.official. Uh, I'm sorry, okay. zetflix.official. So I, I was so inspired um, and, and shocked actually to see this because you know they're releasing uh, serialized shows made with Zepetto Hmm. We never paid them. They call themselves official, but we never paid them. They came up with the name Zetflix and uh, called the show Zetflix Original. This group of teenagers call themselves an you know entertainment company, and they hmm. throw an audition to find talent from from the community uh, in in basically all areas, like voice actors, actresses, script writers. Outfit stylist, uh, photo, video editors, and you know, 3D environment artists, and they're the launching uh, this community created uh, animation show on Instagram, starring uh, multiple characters created with Zepetto avatars, wow. and you know, acting with Zepetto offered animations. 
Wow. Yeah, I mean, this wow. this is crazy because I I told you I used to you know be a music producer when I when I first yeah. started producing I had to invest like you know ten grand to make decent sounding music. It wasn't yeah. like you know mom give me a MacBook Pro, Pro for Christmas. You know yeah. like c- computers back in nineties you know, were only used for sequencing, so I needed an external ha- hardware sampler, synthesizer, compressor. You name it. <laughs> uh, and, you know, let alone I had to buy actually books because there was no YouTube and, you know, pay someone uh, to teach me how to use this, you know, these tools and, uh, you know, machines. Now, all you need to, all you need is a MacBook Pro and a keyboard to be a yeah. music producer. This means yeah. if there were only, you know, thousands um, in the music producer tool, now millions of people can be, can be a producer. And the same thing happened on YouTube side too, right? Like you, you don't have to own a, you know, Hollywood production or, or television network to tell your stories in the form of a video. Uh, you, you can shoot and edit yourself, you know, add captions and put it on YouTube. Bam, you find your niche, uh, you have a global audience. And I think uh, this kind of, you know, Anyone can be a creator and a storyteller wave yep. uh, flows into the 3D animation and uh, video game space. Uh, you don't have to get professionally trained to design your own uh, virtual fashion items or turn your imagination into a game and, or putting everything together into a, you know animation story. There's, there's tons of tut- you know, free tutorials on YouTube. And you know, if you're willing, uh, you, you can give it a shot. Mm-hmm. And platforms like us or, you know, Roblox, they keep working on making this 3D content creation process uh, easier and easier. So a lot, of, a lot more people will be, you know, able to create, you know, like tinker around and, you know, come up with great stories. And can you tell us anything? I mean, I, I, I mean I'm assuming Gen Z is your like primary audience. Are there any surprising user statistics that you think are interesting to share? Or is it just, you're, you're big with Gen Z? <laughs> uh, yeah, Gen Z, I would say that, yeah, most of our users are, yeah, Gen Z, uh, kind of skewed toward, uh, skewed hugely toward female demographics. Okay. Uh, and the, the kind of high profile creators tend to skew a little bit older. Like in their, oh, in their 20s and even even in their 30s. Oh, uh, very I, interesting. I mean, one of the interesting uh, users I met is this like 50 year old woman uh, living in Brooklyn. Uh, she plays the pedo with her uh, with her own daughter. <laughs> they play together, okay. and, and the community knows both of them. And she lured her uh, her daughter, who was kind of into Roblox. Uh, she lured her into Zepetto. She converted her so, into It was a kind Zepetto. of fun story, yeah. Wow, okay. Um, so does that woman, does she, you said she's a creator? Does she make and sell stuff on she's the platform? She's a creator. Okay, mm-hmm. very cool. Um, so let's just maybe talk a little bit more about that part. Um, what do you, so like, for all sorts of reasons, kind of player-to-player economies, creator economies, you know, digital ownership, all of that sort of thing became pretty buzzworthy, like in the last couple of years, Mm -hmm. you know, metaverse, web three, NFT, all that sort of stuff. There's a lot of things kind of, whether you agree with it or not, whether you like it or not, there's a lot of sort of things creating um, momentum and energy on this space. Like, what do you think is, is exciting about a player-to-player economy versus, say, more of a typical kind of free-to-play economy? Um, and do you have any thoughts about where you think, as an industry, we will see these player-to-player economies going in the coming years? Any, any, any thoughts about shifts or evolutions that, that might happen there? Yeah, I think the, the reason we started opening up the studio, uh, it's very simple because we basically couldn't keep up with various demand. Mm-hmm. The, our users are looking for more unique and kind of diverse offerings. And that kind of led us to, to this decision. Let's, we, we should just you know, open, in, open up the platform. Uh, so yeah, I think that what we're gonna see is if we see a kind of top creator who became, become the face of certain platform, yeah, I mean, when, when we look into the NFT kind of crypto space, uh, yeah, the sandbox, people think of uh, Snoop Dogg, but mm-hmm. Snoop Dogg is not a sandbox born creator, right? Absolutely, it's not like, yeah. a, it's, it's not like a, you know, like Charlie DiMaggio of TikTok. Uh, yeah. So I think 
the having the top creators who are born out of uh, that community is really important. And we, you know, for example, there's a creator uh, called Lenge or Lenji. Yeah, I, I don't know how, which. Yeah. Yeah, she started making yeah six figures income, and you know from the item sales alone, and and she's a uh, kid. Oh, she's not. Uh, to be precise, she's in. I think she's in in her twenties. So oh, I mean, really? If it, if it, yeah, oh my she's god! In her twenties. Okay. All right, so she's not quite a kid, but she's still younger than some. Yeah, of she's us. a fresh college grad, uh, <laughs> not professional three D model modeler at all. But she yeah became a it, it became her full time job. That's amazing, um, and. Uh, what do you know about her journey? I mean, I, I watched a little bit of an interview with her. Can you so, sort of summarize it? I mean, how did she go from a player to a dabbler to the closest thing I think you currently have to a Charlie, mm -hmm. you know, a, tic, a Charlie from TikTok on, on, on Zepetto? Yeah, I mean, she's been a Zepetto user uh, for a while, almost you know, before we were uh, social media. And, mm -hmm. you know, and then... She's been around and she made a lot of friends already before we opening up the Zepetto studio. And when we opened it up, she started publishing her own designs like little by little. And we saw, you know, her items were getting traction. Um, and we kind of interviewed her, you know, try to get the feedback, like what, what kind of support do you need from us? And you know, how can we help you uh, make, you know, create more items? What are the, you know, kind of hurdles, uh, kind of technical difficulties she was uh, experiencing? And she says she doesn't uh, have a, any like 3D design background uh, at all, but she didn't mind uh, learning how to use Blender and all this, you know, like modeling techniques. Uh, she grew her own brand named Lenged, Len, Lenged or Lenged uh, in Zepetto. And as, as we saw the, you know, her fandom kind of grew, uh, one time we did, uh, we decided to do an official collaboration with her. Okay. So treating like her, you know, other big name fashion brands, just like yep. we did with Gucci, you know, Nike, yep. Adidas, yep. Dior, uh, in, in that month, uh, her brand became number two in sales, like right after Gucci. Wow. So, you know, like she, she throws uh, her own fashion show in Zepetto and her fans, uh, you know, wait in line to take selfies with her, just like, you know, seeing a real world, you know, popular designer. Uh, and That's she, amazing. Yeah, she now has uh, more than a half, half million uh, followers in Zepetto. Now she created her, uh, you know, YouTube channel and, and an Instagram account expanding her territories. Uh, to hmm. other social media, so it's kind well, of like really the cool other that she is not bringing back. Yeah, that she's the pedo first rather than Instagram uh -huh. first. Yeah. yeah, okay, super cool. And she's yeah getting featured in you know a lot of news articles. Uh, I heard that she was even invited to uh, to Meta, uh, formerly known as Facebook, right? Mm -hmm. To to talk about the creator economy in the metaverse there. So okay. yeah, the funny story is when I when I first. I try to hire people based in the States uh, in 2020, I had to spend like a good amount of time explaining what Zepetto is <laughs> and why they should join us. And now she's kind of making my life easier because people, That's right. oh, I, I heard of Zepetto. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll make more people like her. You want in? Okay, mm -hmm. cool. All right. That's awesome. Um, I, I guess uh, we have to talk, talk also a little bit about sort of the other side of uh, digital ownership. So maybe mm -hmm. just, I'll take a second to make it clear to everyone. Okay. The base Zepetto platform pays users and pays users, let's call it the quote unquote old fashioned way, right? You collect a certain mm -hmm. number of like whatever digital credits and those digital credits can be cashed out and Naver will send you a check uh, mm -hmm. or, you know, whatever, make a deposit into your PayPal account. At its base level, there's nothing blockchain-y, crypto-y, et cetera, about it at, at, Correct, in, in the default Zepetto. Mm -hmm. um, and yet, obviously, you know, particularly in 2021 and beyond, you can't talk about player-to-player -player economy. You can't talk about digital ownership and not acknowledge or talk about Web3 mm -hmm. type stuff. Because the sandboxes of the world and the decentral lands of the world and et cetera, are, are looking to also democratize user-generated content. Mm -hmm. um, and, but they're looking at it more from a sort of maybe NFT or a blockchain or a cryptocurrency point of view rather than, uh, you know, whatever, digital um, coins and, and, and PayPal transfers. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I know that Zepetto has done a couple of uh, uh, 
NFT explorations. There was a sandbox crossover, I think, at some point in time. Uh, I think I've read some other, um, like something with Line, maybe, and Line NFTs or something. Like, I feel like there's been a couple of experiments, shall we say. Mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering if there are any lessons learned there that you're able to, to, to share. Um, do you expect to see sort of Web3 type crossovers and experiments increase or stay static or yeah wh wh where is your head at on that on that front sure yeah it's the it's the hottest topic right like everybody talks about nft blockchain web3 asking yeah. like what is most important in the metaverse and you know like decentralization uh tokenized reward system uh creator economy play to earn or play <laughs> and earn you know this debate <laughs> create to know. earn create right. and earn yeah <laughs> But I, I think what's most important is community trust. So uh, that's that's one of the lessons. And you know we will not take this lightly uh, by making the decision that can be a potential threat to the trust we build As together we've seen, with our right? community. We've definitely seen yeah. some people make some misplays there, yeah. Mm -hmm. So w what I can say is that uh, we're not pursuing the hype. Uh, rather, we will carefully consider the pros and cons of Web3 adoption for Zepetto. And, I think it it may happen eventually, uh, but not overnight for sure. Because yep. you know, once it's on chain, there's no going back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and another kind of you know angle we can look at is uh, you know without decentralization and or adoption of NFTs, Zepetto's MAU is like ten to forty x that of you know Decentraland yep. or the Sandbox. Yeah. So. Uh, what I'm saying is we, we want, want to make sure that technology is accessible enough, like easy to use and you know, mature enough to handle hundreds of millions of, of users and billions of transactions. Because yeah. we have sold more than 1 billion virtual items so far. And you know, sustainability and scalability matter. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. Uh, I'm not devaluing uh, the decentralization philosophy or NFT's word uh, as, a, as a means to verify one's ownership and scarcity of digital assets. Great promises. I'm just saying that, you know, neither of them itself is, is more important than community trust. Yep. So, you know, online or offline, on-chain or off-chain, two or three, you know, social media or gaming platform, you know, I believe... At the end of the day, we, the people, make communities, not, not the new technologies. Uh, but I mean, that doesn't mean... Oh, go ahead. Well, so it's just, it, I guess the word that I'd, I'd love to just put the tech stuff aside. I'd love to mm -hmm. just talk about the word ownership. Because mm -hmm. to me, it all comes down to that word. What does it mean to own something? Um, well, generally speaking, if you own something, you can like do with it what you want, right? You can mm -hmm. like resell it, you can trade it, you can destroy it. Like that's all kind of like permitted. Mm -hmm. um, I'd love to just hear, if, you, if you're willing, I'd love to just hear you ruminate a little bit on sort of ownership and how important do you think it is to Zepedo's player base today that they feel like they own the thing rather than, well, what's the opposite of owning uh renting or leasing or something. How right. important do you think the word ownership is to Zepetto players? Uh, it's very important. I mean, the definition of ownership and this, when we talk about the scope of it, for example, you know, ability to discard uh, whenever yep. I want it, like to that level, uh, Zepetto may not, off may not offer that yet. I mean, you could discard your, you know, you could deactivate your account and, you know, get rid of all the stuff, but uh, people who purchase the items already may not, you know, may not be able to kind of retract everything. So yep. I think the ownership in the sense that you have the control to, you know, publish to this, you know, metaverse or that verse, uh, that ownership Zepetto is relatively open than, you know, other competitors, for example, mm -hmm. I mean, let's say Roblox. Yep. Because uh, the, the reason we were we're built on uh, Unity. Of course, it's easier. Uh, it's more accessible, more widely known. Uh, but also, like imagine, uh, you know, Roblox has Roblox owns full stacks from yes. you know Discovery Engine, uh, Playbacks, you know, Engine, uh, you know, Marketplace, uh, you know, creation tools. So if you uh, create something on on Roblox, if you want to move it over to some other verse, uh, mm -hmm. you basically have to redo it from scratch, right? Absolutely, yeah. But because Zepetto uses this, you know, 
Unre- uh, uh, Unity, Unity 3D yeah. and and anyone who can use you know like 3D modeling Blender. tools like Blender, uh, you can export it as a FBX file, which is a standard. Then you know you could, if you want to, you can transfer it to somewhere else. You build a game experience uh, to Zepetto, and if you want to make it a standalone app and you know publish on you know regular app stores or Play Store, it's all yours. Mm-hmm. So like in terms of that openness. Uh, I think that's what a uh, user, like especially creators care about. Like, I don't want to be, you know, just exclusive on this Locked platform. Into a we, yeah, platform. We just, yeah, we just talked about it too, right? We're, we're not aiming to be the only platform these creators are active yep. in. We're, we're more aiming to be, you know, one of the, one of the platform yep. they could, they could have it as an that avenue. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I'd be, uh, obviously, you know, only time will tell. Um, I'd be very interested to see what a, a version of Zepetal would look like. Again, not blockchain, right? Where the that sense of ownership trickled down to the individual level. Where I bought a hat from, you know, whatever L- L- Lengi. Lengi? Am I, am I pronouncing the, the name Lengi right? Lengi or Lengi? I, I don't know what would be the correct. I, I, yeah, I buy a hat from here. Lengi, right? And uh-huh. and that represents something to me. It represents my my association with her, my fandom of her. Um, but like lots of, you know, wonderful items in the real world, the, the, the pedigree of the ownership is part of the story, right? The, mm-hmm. the, the owners of the Stradivarius violin are mm-hmm. almost as important as the sound that it makes, right? And, okay. and it's one of the defining features of owning a Stradivarius is, well, who are all the people who owned it beforehand? That mm-hmm. means that I, as a player who bought a Lenghi original, at some point in time, need to be able to functionally transfer that ownership on to someone else and say, mm-hmm. you know, hey, Jay, you can now buy it from me, right? So your one-to-many player economy becomes a many-to-many player economy. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe one day Zepetto will go there, and that would be a very interesting experiment to see. I, w- I would find that fascinating because there's not a lot of that, certainly outside of the decentralized world. And mm-hmm. I agree with everything that you said about some of the challenges of decentralized, some of the benefits, at least today, of, of centralized. And when I survey the market for someone who could probably possibly have the benefits of a centralized, you know, whatever, ecosystem, mm-hmm. but also explore some of these richer player-to-player economy elements, Zepetto mm-hmm. is always very high on my list. So I'm really interested mm-hmm. to see what you guys do next. Yeah, I mean, you may have heard uh, about the announcement that, you know, we partner with Crafton PUBG. Yes, I just uh, saw that pl- yesterday. Yeah, we're planning to create a Web3 native NFT-based metaverse uh, built on the Unreal Engine. Um, you know, like I said, uh, Zepetto users kind of tend to skew towards more socializers than gamers. And mm-hmm. Maybe their kind of idea of having kind of collectibles and, you know, claiming the ownership of the collectibles may not be as strong as, you know, gamers Very interesting. Uh, type of, you know, users, right? So, and they tend to be more interested in, uh, you know, making connections than winning and achieving or collecting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So in our, uh, you know, our, our users, and, you know, they they care about kind of cute, uh, pretty uh, style as aesthetics than realistic kind of aesthetics. So it may make sense to us uh, to build a new platform cater right. to more of a mature and uh, a core gamer type of users who care about these collectibles, you know, like associating memory, uh, you know, attaching to to the digital assets. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Craft and PUBG is an um, you know Unreal expert, uh, I mean cool. Unreal Engine expert, and you know knows how to build a game that's loved by billions of you know DAUs worldwide. We'll, we'll and, have to keep our eyes on that one as well. <laughs> yeah, and we know how to build a kind of community and creator economy. So. Yeah, see those happens. two things go very well together. All right, well, then, uh, Jay, listen, thank you very much. All the best to you, your team, all the best to Zepetto. Everyone, if you haven't already, I highly recommend you take a look at it uh, as a game, as a social network, as a social platform, as a creator economy. Uh, Jay and his team uh, are doing some really, really interesting things with Zepetto. It's definitely worth your time and your attention. And Jay, thank you so much for being on the the podcast today. I really appreciate it and have a great day. Thank you for having me. Bye. See ya. All right. Thanks again, Jay, for your time, your energy, your enthusiasm, your insight into this uh, fascinating world. 
Uh, that's a wrap for yet another episode of the Tomorrow with Rovio podcast. As always, I'm your host, Ben Mattis. Next month, we hope to feature an interview with someone else who's doing some really interesting stuff in the sort of community social space. Again, with a strong focus on Gen Z and sort of digital natives um, and how this audience changes and thinks really differently about sort of how they share things online. Um, I hope that's an, uh, an interesting teaser. We'll announce more as the date draws close. Um, but uh, I, I found that interview very, very stimulating as well. I hope you do too. As always, if you have any uh, suggestions about guests uh, worth interviewing or themes worth exploring, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, I can be reached at ben.mattis at rovio.com. I'd love to hear your thoughts and suggestions. And as always, thank you so much for tuning in, sharing your time and your enthusiasm and listening. Uh, and I will talk to you in a month. Have a good one. Bye, everyone.